Well, here I am again, ladies and gentlemen, out walking the dog. And I guess you know the coronavirus is still the number one conversation across the world today. You know, I thinking about it this morning. For the past 30 some odd years, one of the major conversations here in America, and I presume other places, has been about population control. Population control. You know, they even made movies about it. We would talk about things like, what was it? What was the name of that movie about 12? Uh, uh, ah, well, anyway, 2012. Yes, that's the name of that movie, 2012. It had to do with a virus. Then Stephen King talked about it so long ago, had to do with the virus. And there have been so many movies that had to do with stuff like what we're going through today. And supposedly we, the nations of the world, were unprepared to deal with it. Isn't that amazing? Okay. Now that has been a conversation for over 30 some years. But have you noticed that all of a sudden they don't talk about it anymore? Back then when they talked about it, you know, if they want to shut somebody up and don't pay too much attention to a conversation, you don't want you to focus on it. Talk about it as a conspiracy theorist. And all of a sudden, people would just assume that it's bull and don't focus on anything, regardless of how real it might be, how advantageous it might be to do these kinds of things. You just don't do it because of a title that it has been given. Now, nobody talks about population control. But what would it do? It would wipe out millions of people. And we know, you know, a lot of people believe that, well, they won't do that. Come here. No way they will do that. And recognizing the truth of the matter is that people will do any and everything. There's no doubt about that. And so you have to be prepared for the possibilities, not just the probabilities. And so this is a very serious and a very important thing, ladies and gentlemen, that I suggest we never lose our focus. Now, you think about what would population control do? What's the benefit of population control? Well, when you use up all of your needs for extra work, for extra labor, for extra people, you don't need them anymore. So, in a system where you have kind of set up that you kind of support your little... <laughs> You support your little stuff. Now you don't want to support it. It's like Trump saying, oh my God, I didn't want to say anything about Trump, but I couldn't help it. It's like saying uh, the economy has to got to get back to flowing. So in the midst of a crisis that we have no control over, don't have any idea where it's going, except up, uh, we want to put people back to work because the most important thing is making money. That represents what we call the best of us the smartest of us you know we have an attitude that uh some people truly are better than other really are smarter than other really do deserve more than others if you notice they have a uh, something built in called the public sector and the private sector all those things that's done in this country all the things that's done in this world are done by the public, the public. Now, when they say <laughs> private, that means that they have found a way to come up to abuse and exploit the public for their own purpose. And as a consequence, because of the exploitation, it robs of the public that benefit. And by robbing the public of that benefit and making it private, it's more costly. See, nothing but a con game, ladies and gentlemen. So, I'm going to end this video here. Four minutes is long enough. And I'm going to come back on another one, okay? Thank you for listening.